I've got this all written down for you to read here. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to do it for you. So, some people, especially if you watch this channel, have thought about getting small wind turbines for your solar power system. Words slow there, guys. <laughs> and, um, but you're like, I don't have that much wind. But the thing is, is that you can still have a small wind turbine and it will come in handy. Trust me. The thing is, is that when it's really gloomy outside and dark, that's usually when your solar power goes down, right? And you want to keep your batteries charged. And so that's actually the purpose of having a small wind turbine on your roof, because usually when it's gloomy outside, it's windy. And uh, we got these notes. Dad's going to show you how to charge a 36 volt system with a 48 volt wind turbine and a 12 volt system with a 24 volt wind turbine. And you can look below the video for the links of all the stuff that he suggested. And it's easy. He wrote it's easy down here for me. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Um, what we've got here is we have a 36 volt battery and people are asking um, in previous videos. So I want you to go look right up here. Boom. I want to make that little pop up and it's going to be the video that shows you how to use slave batteries. Uh, in multiple formats, charge controllers, you yourself can do, and it simplifies all of it. It's previous video, right there, okay? What she's talking about is there's a ton of you guys who want small wind power, and you're like, well, I ain't got that much wind. And you can do it, but you got to pick the right battery system. The, the problem is, is that the type of windings, so in a 48 volt turbine, it has much finer windings, and we're gonna show you a graph here in a second. The 24 volt, a little thicker. The thicker the windings, the harder it has to push to get the power into the battery. The lighter the windings, the more it can push, but you're not going to get 100%. So we're gonna flip this over right quick, and we're gonna get some details. And while we're doing this, I'm going to show you here. This is a 36 volt. 36 volt, go below the video, and this is uh, Sweet Power. These are the ones I've been using for nearly 10 years. These are tough, affordable, true sine wave, just monsters in ability and longevity. This here is the EnjoyBot battery. Now, it took a long time. I found two battery brands. There's a lot of them out there. Two battery brands that have all of the bells and whistles, even the power button, all the bells and whistles that you want. But I have been cycling this and we're gonna get into that. She's, me and her both have kept notes. So this is about wind turbines, but we're gonna be running this um, during the time, so you'll get to see why we're showing you the 36 volt battery. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on medium high and hit the start button. And we're going to perk Kira's T because I want, so to. she just turned it off. Now it's been running and it's sitting at, there it is 121 volts, 39.6 volts. So the battery is at about 89, 90% capacity right now. forever just forever and we're going to show you multiple loads on it now here's the deal all right don't forget you got to go watch this video up here after you watch this so you'll understand what makes all of this possible now i've been doing small wind turbines all right subscribe you'll understand uh go in there and look at my older videos i started with them decades ago so one of the things is is that a higher voltage turbine can charge the battery, but you must use a slave battery system. If Absolutely. you're going to use lithium batteries to store your power, you must use cheap, common 12 volt batteries wired into 36, wired into 24, wired into 12, whatever you're going to use. Okay. It's a must. 
And as far as, you know, how do you run your controller? Well, you just tap the power off one battery because times three, times four, times six, it won't matter. I'll be showing that in the next video. That's why you got to the subscribe thing. It's easier to do in Central Texas. We don't have as much wind as we did in Idaho. You guys saw Idaho where it was just blasting away. Look at that. We your tea's got color, Kara. Look. I see that. It's almost okay. done. All right. So this thing here pulling how many watts is it? Pulling what? Thirteen hundred watts off of this thing here. The fan just kicked on. All that jabbering I've been doing. Now you're looking at. 15 mile an hour wind. So say the average person in Kentucky, in uh, Georgia, in uh, Nevada, has a 15 mile an hour wind. That is their good winds. And average is about seven. And peaks are around 23. Well, this is the goal you want. Now, in my case, that's where I'm at now. So this is the goal I want. And when I was in Idaho, my, my baseline wind was 24. It was a lot. In the wintertime, it was 34. In the summertime, it was 14. I mean, it was a pretty much a baseline of 24 miles per hour. A 12-volt system, a 12-volt turbine on a 12-volt battery, it worked fine. But the most of the country is not going to get that benefit. And not unless you're in Colorado, central Kansas, Minnesota, you know, where the wind channels come through, Montana, you're not really going to get that much wind. So you want to make sure that get my cup. you'll get your cup. On. So you want to make sure that you're set up where you can do wind power. So here is the process. A 48 volt wind turbine at a particular RPMs will exceed battery voltage and charge a 36 volt battery. And since the battery is below that of the turbine's wiring system, it easily charges it less resistance if it's trying to shoot it into a 48 volt battery it's a lot more resistance and the the wind has to be much higher so you need a much higher speed so the common factors is that with a 48 volt system the optimum wind speed is going to be roughly about 11 to 12 miles per hour doesn't matter so I'll show you here. This is this is the industry data. All right. So a 48 volt wind turbine for a 48 volt battery, you're going to cut in. That means you're going to exceed 48 volt at 11.2 miles per hour average. And we're using look below the video. I'm going to put a link to that. And at the very end of the video, I put my wind turbine videos collection. Go on there and look. You'll, we're going to be using the 600 watt. Green Energy Solutions Turbine, low wind, three blade. You don't need 12 blades, 13 blades, six blades, three blades, all you need. It doesn't matter where you're at, okay? And they're quiet. They're very quiet. The ones that have five, six, eight, 12 blades on them, man, they sound like cats having a party on your roof. Your neighbors don't need that either. So, all right. So a 48 volt turbine cuts in at 11.2. A 12 volt turbine, because the because you're only trying to get it into the plates of one battery, 9.8 miles per hour, it will cut in. Okay, it will cut in and start charging. Not much. You're looking at 10 watts at 9.8 miles per hour. Now, the thing about a wind turbine is it's like horsepower in a car. It's an extreme angle of just a, another quarter of a mile per hour that's, you know, 18 watts. Another mile an hour, that's 25 watts. Another, say, four miles per hour, that's over 150 watts. It just highly progressive. So, and you'll see by that chart. Now, this is the chart after nearly 200 or 200 plus installs of what we have done mathematically and learned about these turbines, this turbine. And GE has a lot of turbines that have very similar behaviors if you want to pick one. They make a thousand watt, same suggestion. However, don't forget that video right there is going to explain some details about amp hours for batteries you're going to pick when you go to certain wattages. Okay. All right. Right in here with a 
15 plus mile per hour wind with a 24 volt turbine, you will, you will begin to get 70 to 80% of the 600 watt rating. And before you have a cow, you need to realize you're using a different turbine than intended for the battery you're using. It what's works. That, what's that supposed to mean? That means it's supposed to be for a 24 volt battery system, but you're going to charge a 12 volt. So what happens is you actually get to a resistance rejection limit. Really? So when the turbine is trying to shove the voltage in, the battery simply won't take the voltage. That means the amperage will crash, the wattage will crash, and you'll get what's like a horsepower curve drop off, not a continuation. Okay. Oh, okay. So there's your 70, 80% right there. Okay. But to have a 600 watt turbine and be able to put 430 and 400 watts into your battery bank, that's substantial. In a 36 volt battery bank, that's the that's the relative uh, equivalent of about 30 amps to be able to get that into that battery. And in a 12 volt system, that is right at 60 amps to try to get that in your system because it's more continuous. It, it doesn't peak and drop, the, the turbine doesn't lose a lot of its RPMs because it's not up against equalized resistance. The 36 volt battery is lesser resistance than the 48 and the 12 volt battery is lesser resistance as absorption, I'm sorry, absorption resistance than the 24. So your, your, your turbine will, in other words, your turbine will spin freer. It'll spin freer. Okay. And as long as it does that, it don't slow down as it buffets or the wind speed changes. It continues over time you'll probably get more than 80% result over time. But in a 24 hour period of wind, that's your average. So one of the big things is, is that a lot of people do not have the ability or think they can use a wind turbine. Okay. And I, I will, I will say, go look up wind map, my area, wind map, wind maps, my area and get an idea. It'll show you your average winds, and then you're, I'm sure, if you're watching the video, you know that the the average winds in your area, you know, are 5 to 7. Like in my area, the average winds are 5 to 28. That's a hell of a span, ain't it? Why do they come up with that number, Texas Hill Country? Because of inversions. They had them in Idaho too, but here in Texas, they're more extreme. And so when you have no wind all day long, you still got a seven to 10 mile per hour breeze. Yeah. That's enough for some cut in on this, on the same size turbine, but same 10 watt. However, I'll be getting better than 20 Watts. If I use a 24 volt turbine, because as the wind kind of, comes and goes, the 12 volt turbine to go to a 12 volt battery will immediate slow down against the load that it's pushing. The 24 volt turbine feeling less resistance from the battery will continue to stay spun up a little bit. So it makes it more over time. Now, if you got a lot of wind, don't waste your time going with a higher voltage uh, turbine. Don't do that. But if you have continuous wind of say 14 to 17 miles per hour um anytime the weather's bad at night during the winter this is your goal right here so what is the benefit of a wind turbine added to your system well let's let's go into simplicity i'm just going to use these li times say i've got this set up now 36 volt so there's my negative come over here come over here there's my positive 36 volts. I can be pulling power at three o'clock in the morning and my BMS shuts off and I'm done. But if I have continuous power being entered into the system, matching those batteries to these, remember I told you that video, using one of these or one of these to connect lead acid with lithium there's lithium right there and this bank here's lead acid and they are straight freaking connected other videos that's why you guys subscribe you'll understand now over here we're going to be having 
a 48 volt turbine charge a 36 volt battery okay and we're going to have that 36 volt battery matched off of this right here with a small booster not a very powerful booster it doesn't have to be and then we're going to have off our 12 volt power bank this right here 700 watts while solar is available during the day so so the other video 600 uh, 60 amps and 20 amps is the same 700 watts 700 watts so 700 watts of power going into that right there now that i have a couple of these a couple of them so the scenarios and the enjoy bot are the best freaking ones i found okay i have not found a better battery you better look below look below the video to the link to that they make the 36 they make the 48 and what's really shocking is a absolute similar 36 volt battery sold by a company called Woolless or something like that weighs pounds less than this one why another battery that is made by chins it's a 36 volt battery weighs seven pounds less than this one why again is it missing something yeah yeah you'll see here in a minute it's missing something all right the other thing is is that when you get a controller you want to make sure you get a controller for solar that can do 12 24 36 and 48 so self-identifying there 36 volt and that's why i use the li times now they make similar controllers that are near identical to this from another brand but the li time has a easier tunable software to work with your exact voltage for lithium than those other brands. And I think it's like $5 more. But you ain't got a trip. Second thing is, is no one else includes the big standoffs and all the hardware, literally, like this does. All right, now, back to this. This 36 volt, 100 amp hour capacity is equal to three. It, it, this is the same wattage. Remember, wattage is the work you're going to use. Wattage, 1300. That's what's cooking that. Wattage is what runs that. It's the same as this. It's the same as this. So this is about 1200 bucks. This with all the features, Bluetooth, auto, everything on it, charge, charge balancing, and it's got a huge three amp charge balancer. On and off safety power switch, auto reset. You don't have to mess with it. This one, $100 less. It's just like this one right here. You see that SFK? Y'all look at that link there. That is a 304 amp hour battery. it is compared to this lamp but that thing is like it's freaking unbelievably heavy oh it's like 100 pounds it's no, 70 60 70 pounds it feels like 100 it feels like 100 and it comes with everything you need all right it's like this volt go okay 400 amp hour 12 volt over 100 pounds now i could get four of these and it would be about 78 pounds and you're like what's well, the same well technically yes but more structure means more weight so when you have a battery that's built with more structure you got more lifetime more structure more lifetime more structure more lifetime this is an introduction to this to give you why you need to and can do this Okay, the green energy turbine, the link is below the video. That green energy turbine is the best they make. And when you go to this, that link below the video, you're going to see competitors' models, and you're going to have to realize what's in this is pure copper. You got it? What's in them brushes is silver. What's those magnets are N52 magnets. And you're going to see SMAD and, and Lovejoy and all these other brands down there that have one. Say, man, that looks just like the same one. $100 less. I'm going to save my butt. 
<laughs> and then you're going to put a you're going to put a video up going that damn John Daniel Lyon son of a no bees are spec that GE turbine is spec their turbine this turbine weighs 55 pounds the one you're going to save $100 on 40 pounds so what you're dealing with is you're saving a buck but you're getting screwed cheap yes and I'm just telling you GE that link below gets you to the ones that has the high ratings for a reason. I'm giving y'all a best option scenario right there. You can do your wind turbine where you don't have a lot of wind, but you have storms, no solar. You have nighttime, no solar, unless you're, you know, one of those people, you know, one of those moon and sun folks, flat earther. <laughs> and then... <laughs> speaking to the hippies here. Speaking to the hippies. Snow, no solar. In fact, we know that one kept us alive, but well. our wind turbines kept us going. Yeah. So. Kept us warm. Kept us warm. One of the things is I want y'all to know when you get a quality battery, you're going to have it for a long time. This battery is designed to go to 97%, 97 and a half, and it's designed to disconnect at 7%. And even with that in mind, come check these details out. This is because you're going to try to do wind power. You need more options so you can make a 36 volt battery bank for your house cheap a 36 volt inverters these are only like 250 bucks the 3000 watt no joke and if you look at my other videos about sweet power built like a brick what do you call that outhouse House. outhouse yeah <laughs> so ind indestructible if you're stupid you can damage them okay but it really can do what it claims. This battery, even with the fact that it would shut down and leave 5% or 7% not being used, it's going to last me at least three years longer than the batteries that allow you to go from 100% to zero. If you know anything about lithium iron phosphate. Now, um, we did numerous tests. Now, I want you to remember that. This battery is shying itself of, what, almost like 9%. 9% waste that it's not giving you. It's, in other words, the volt. Okay? But here's our results. All right, so we did all the results on this battery. And this EnjoyBot battery, with it, with it disconnecting higher than most and stop taking charge just a little lower than most is still produced these are the dates here all right when we first got the battery on 811 105.9 amp hours so that's the equivalent of 300 and say 17 amp hours of 12 volt that's the equivalent of 317 amp hour battery so i think what they got in here is i i think they got i think they got one tenths i think the cells are 110 amp hour I don't even know who the hell these guys are. I'm just wanting you guys to be able to do this. I want you guys to be able to do this. And we're going to be having wind turbine videos coming up real, real soon. We've got the poles up. We got me doing better. I got Kira put a chain on my leg after I hurt my back putting 250 watt solar panels on he keeps, a... He keeps trying to go up there. On a uh, gas station roof. So Kira I, shut I me down. I can't keep him off the ladder. So here we go. Now, <laughs> these are all our tests. I'm just going to let y'all read that. This was actually from somebody else who did a review on this battery, not this battery, but one of their batteries and was shocked at the quality for the price. And I have no idea. It's a silly, stupid name, but that battery is a freaking excellent battery. And as you can tell, the report on this is very good. This one here is going to be running a well pump. So we're going to be running a 24 volt well pump using a buck. So similar to this. And that way we can send the power a long distance because the well is 74 feet down and we're going to use 36 to 29 volts. And by the time it gets to the bottom of the pump, it'll be about 26, 25 and a half. And that's what we want for a deep well 24 volt pump so it works well all right guys y'all put your questions um 
Look down there around the video. There's uh, uh, buy me a coffee and Ko-Fi if y'all want to donate to help this process out. And I'll answer as many questions as I can. But just remember the math. It matters. Remember the math. Okay. You're looking at the right turbine for the right battery. And if you try to send a 48 volt to a 24, well, you're going to end up with about 50%. It'll work, but 50% of the initial rating. And 80% is so much better over time. Remember that. When you're installing something, it's to use it for a while, not a few weeks. Okay? And that is the goal. Something we just got in the other day is the coolest thing, if you're an apartment dwelling person, is this Tim Cut. Tim Got Battery. T-E-M-G-O-T. If you live in an apartment, New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, hmm, <laughs> especially those places, right, where you got to hide nowadays. Yeah. If you live in one of them places, get you a couple of these, get you a charger, get you an inverter. When they kill the power to kick your door in, hey, you kick your lights on. I'll be showing that one here next. So what do you got to say, Kara? Uh, I got to say that uh, this video was very long, but I think it was very informative for you and especially for me. I'm still kind of a noob at this. There's stuff I don't know, and this has filled in a lot of holes. Yes, that's what we're working on. So, you guys, y'all stay tuned. We're going to be putting turbines up real soon. Oh, and also, for a last note, if you're a camper and you don't want to set fire to the grass around you, may I suggest this? Up until about, I don't know, I say 10 minutes ago, I haven't been able to drink my tea because it got too hot, so don't underestimate the power of... Uh, in, wave. In, induction cooking. Yeah, there we go. So. But I would suggest one of those strongly. Yes, they work great. If you got a magnet and a cast iron skillet, there, there you we go. go. There you go. Put questions down if you have them. And don't forget, 36 volt system, 48 volt turbine. 12 volt system, 24 volt turbine. Links are below the video, blah, blah, blah. All that crap. Yeah. All right. It's, it's easy. It's not crap, though, because it's useful. It's it's what? It's not crap because it's useful. It's real stuff. Yes. All right. Y'all be good.